Can I finish this chatbot over my YouTube channel in an hour? Hello, data fans. Streamit was running an LLM hackathon over the past two weeks now with partners like Assembly AI, Llama Index, and Weaviate. I didn't really want to participate, but those cloud platforms are supposed to help me quickly build new AI prototypes to show my stakeholders. So on a Saturday morning, I decided to speed build an app that uses those free partners. I got mixed results. Why are you telling me you cannot generate the script? But only by prototyping can you see the many areas of improvements to the basic rag tutorial. And it only cost me half a Big Mac, so at this point this is the new hello world of Gen AI, so you should experience it with me. Here's a new repo. Here's your data folder, all of the audio and the transcripts in the necessary folders. I have a lot of small YouTube scripts, uh, almost one per subtask, I think. And then there's this .env file and the .streamit slash secret stumble file, which is basically the same. And both of them contain sensitive information, so you definitely want to put them immediately into .gitignore. Time to gather my videos. And by that I mean my videos are on this external hard drive, so I just need to copy paste them into my local SSD. But Fanil, I don't have your videos in that external hard drive. There are Python libraries to download videos from a YouTube playlist. I'm sure you'll find one. I just have this Pathlip script that searches for all MP4 videos to copy them to my local drive. But my video files are too big for my small SSD, so I'd rather extract the audio immediately. I don't I don't understand streaming. And for that I can use my favorite command line tool to convert video to audio. And that tool is FVLC. <laughs> yes, your favorite media player like VLC or IMP, which have a menu to convert media, should also have a command line to extract audio from video. Anyway, we're not going to do that. Install FFmpeg from the conda forge and with a clever F string, use that command to extract audio from each video in the input folder. Two years of YouTube content. I wonder how many hours this is. Did you know that FFmpeg comes with FFprob, which can estimate the length of a video? Though the answer is actually written in the metadata of said MP3, so don't bother with FFprob. I made another very smart pathlib script to sum the duration of all MP3s that you can read with the mutagen library. Try to guess how many hours of content did I create in two years of YouTube? I didn't create subtitles for any of my videos, so you can't download any. You will need to write them down yourself. Or be the lazy developer and use a cloud service like Assembly AI with state-of-the-art conformer to model trained over a million hours of English. It's gonna be a first world championship! Create an account, find the API key in the account tab and copy it to the secret.env file. Go to the pricing page and check for the rates. For 8 hours of audio content? Yes, 8 hours. That, that's a full night of binge watching all of my videos. I'm expecting it to cost around $5. I think you get $10 for free, I don't remember, but you can add funds through the big blue button in the top right. You, you can't miss it. You just need to add a, a payment method for doing this. I'm using my own money here, so please buy me a coffee to help me stay awake. Here's a new script to browse each audio file in the input folder and transcribe it with assembly AI into the output folder. After assembly AI is configured with your API key, it has multiple options to customize the transcription. In this case, I know my video editor program has trouble subtitling the word streamlit, which always becomes streaming. So I try to highly boost the transcription of the word streamlit. And there are more features like word timings for subtitles or speaker detection, but I'll let you test those. I think it took less than 30 minutes with the default configuration, so no performance optimization anywhere. For 8 hours of content, I'm happy. How can we query all of those transcripts and find the best sentences that talks about CSS in a streamlit button? Well, we could do a deep dive into information retrieval theory, read all about sparse retrieval, bag of words and keyword matching, etc. But none of that matters anymore because we have OpenAI embeddings. With OpenAI embeddings, encode all of the information for a chunk of a transcript 
into a vector and easily query the chunk whose vector is closest to the vector of your CSS question. Create an OpenAI API key from the dashboard, copy it into the .env file and load it in a new Python script. We need to read the transcript, split the transcripts into chunks and then send them to the OpenAI embeddings API to get the vector representation. Fortunately, Llama Index provides you with the tools to ingest and chat with your data sources using an LLM. Like every decent developer, I copy pasted the quick start from Llama Index documentation. There's code to read transcripts in a directory and chunk them. There's a service context that defines which LLM to use to vectorize the transcripts and a storage context. We need to store our vectorized chunks of transcripts somewhere, right? Is it time for PostgreSQL to shine with the new PG vector extension? Now we'll use Reviate. <laughs> Head to Reviate Cloud. Create a new free vector database sandbox. It will be destroyed in 14 days, but you can create another one afterwards. Get the API key and the URL and drop them into .env. Load them into a new Weaviate client, use them in the vector store index call and run the script to build the vectorized index of transcripts into Weaviate Cloud. To be honest, I'm not really sure how it stores the index in Weaviate. There's a GraphQL UI, but if you've never used GraphQL, it takes a little bit of practice to query the documents that you want. We're in Python world. There's a Python SDK that generates the proper GraphQL queries for you. In a new Streamit app, we build a Weaviate client. I managed to look into the Weaviate schema and find the Lama index class. A Weaviate class defines a collection of objects with a predefined structure. The Lama index is the class containing all of our chunked vectorized transcripts with associated metadata. I can fetch random objects from this class to see how they look like. You'll find the doc ID, the chunk of text, and if you add the with vector argument, you'll find the OpenAI embedding for the given chunk. Weaviate even comes with multiple search capabilities. I can look for documents which contains a certain keyword like CSS. I can search for documents with the vector chunk closest to the vector for a given query. And it doesn't work. <laughs> it keeps telling me to use the near vector and compute the vector for the CSS query all by myself. Yeah, that's the kind of trouble you get when there are multiple layers. Like the way to correctly insert, update, or query our Weaviate vectors is through Lama Index. You could imagine Lama Index as your database Weaviate interface. Time to build the front-end part of our three-tier architecture. Like a lazy developer in a hackathon rush, I copy-pasted the code from a blog post, link in the description below. The code reloads the Lama Index connection to Weaviate, and creates a chat engine interface to query the transcript chunks while memorizing the conversation as future context. We store all user and generated messages inside session state, link the chat engine to the chat message widget, and there you go! You can now chat with my YouTube transcripts. Uh, what is Streamlit? Streamlit is a platform that allows users to deploy and interact with data apps, blah, 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 blah. Can you generate a YouTube script about editing a button with CSS? Also, Streamlit could potentially be embedded in other frameworks like FastAPI. Yeah, this is not true. <laughs> Sure, I can help you generate a YouTube script. Yeah, hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Generate a tutorial to edit the background. Yes, I can generate a tutorial. <laughs> Please write it down <laughs> and do it. <laughs> and do it. Come on, you can do it. You should focus on selecting the video IDs. But <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I mean, write a tutorial. <laughs> You're not helping. Sometimes it just goes whoosh. <laughs> Why are you telling me you cannot generate the script? Ah. To be fair, I do talk about this in one of my videos. To be honest with you, I hate coding tutorials on YouTube. 
but I wonder how it ranked so high in the vector retrieval to generate an answer like this. Anyway, two hours of work later and the price of half a Big Mac, now I can chat with my YouTube playlist. We learned a lot through this two hour prototype and only when you go through a full prototype can you see all of the little, you know, improvements you could do. Here's a long list of all the things I thought about during this two hour hackathon. There are edge cases where OpenAI embeddings is not reliable enough and I would like to mix in some keyword search to target the correct chunk of transcripts, which Reviate actually supports with hybrid search. I could extract keywords and topics from the transcript in AssemblyAI to store in metadata and help filter the documents and the vectors. There's no Python code in my YouTube transcripts, I would need to add the code in each of the text files and hope they don't get chunked by Lama index, which means I actually need to change the splitting system of Lama index if there's code. I could try a different embedding API than OpenAI. If they are not trained on YouTube casual scripts, the embeddings won't be as reliable on my scripts. Heck, maybe I could even fine tune my own embedding model on YouTube casual scripts so it handles my YouTube transcripts even better when embedding. I wonder now, should I try fine-tuning on my YouTube scripts and blog writings? Because I really want GenAI to generate scripts with my style of writing and talking.